thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in today. Um, Going to talk to you a little bit about uh, our ITS Jamf integration and how you can hopefully simplify and improve your ServiceNow I, ITAM program with it. Um, this, uh, you know, I'm with ITS Partners. So, um, my name is Jay Weigard. I am the product leader here at ITS Partners. Um, I lead our product development, which uh, basically consists of ServiceNow store apps right now, primarily. Um, <clears throat> again, we're ITS Partners. We do a lot of uh, pro services. Um, we have very strong ITOM, ITAM, uh, SecOps practices, you know, doing a lot of service now implementations, also, also Symantec, DLP, um, SEP, stuff like that. Um, I have uh, about 16 years of experience in web design and development. Um, two years were uh, spent as a senior UI engineer at ServiceNow before leaving to lead product development here at ITS Partners. Uh, my current projects are basically a lot of ITAM and SecOps integrations, um, always with a focus on user experience. Um, so the Jamf integration that we're talking about today, also uh, VulnDB vulnerability integration, and uh, something that I'm calling ITS Asset Intelligence, which is kind of like a... Uh, a credit karma experience for the CMDB. Um, ITS Partners has uh, you know, over 20 years of experience helping large IT organizations break free of the mundane. So we have a lot of experience and you know, a lot of different disciplines, and that's really what helps us to deliver the expertise uh, found in apps like our ITS Champ integration, which was really informed a lot by um, you know, some issues that our ITAM practice was seeing in the field. Um, they kind of just weren't seeing that uh, the um, that the Jamf integrations, they weren't really seeing anything that was that was usable within the uh, the SAM uh, product. So um, let's get into a little bit of like, you know, managing Max at the enterprise level. Um, I think this is a pretty common user story where a lot of organizations tend to let Max kind of trickle into their enterprise pretty slowly at first. And typically, you know, because they're kind of trickling in slowly, uh, maybe the design department is letting, you know, three or four in. And so because it's a small pool at first, they come in, you know, unmanaged. Um, then eventually more and more users see that Macs are an option and eventually ownership hits a critical mass that does require enterprise management. I mean, you can't just kind of, let all these machines have whatever software installed on them and you know, be managing them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, so uh, Jamf Pro is a product that helps to manage them. Um, it's typically, it's frequently referred to as something akin to like an SCCM for Macs. Um, but the process to import you know, hardware and software data from Jamf Pro into your ServiceNow CMDB is still gonna be a painful manual process that would require you know, a fairly involved integration to be built. So, and then Jamf Pro, again, if you if you aren't familiar, Jamf Pro was developed by Jamf. Um, it's a comprehensive management system for Apple, Mac OS computers and iOS devices. Also, also does some stuff with TV OS, you know, the Apple TV devices, frequently described as being like SCCM for Macs. Um, and then, you know, with Jamf Pro, IT techs can provide a native Apple experience while proactively managing you know the entire life cycle of all apple devices you can enroll and deploy max ios and tv devices with ease and automatically collect you know your hardware software and security inventory from apple devices um, you can secure them and get some reporting distribute applications to users and you can create automated policies to manage you know who has which software and uh, what kinds of things you know do different levels of users are able to do. How can our integration help? You know the title the title promises three ways you know the integration can simplify and improve your ServiceNow ITAM program. So primarily, I mean, what we kind of sought to do initially was to inventory the Mac hardware and software to the same standards as the Microsoft SCCM integration that can be found on the platform. Um, the Jamf API doesn't natively contain publisher info, which is you know, crucial to being able to properly normalize your software data within the ServiceNow SAMP product. And um, since that 
you know, that's not natively available, um, you're, you're not going to be able to really normalize software without doing some, some kind of very custom stuff. So our integration contains a proprietary script, which will, um, you know, help to fill in those publisher blanks and greatly improve your normalization rates. Um, the, the proper kind of like normalization stuff also ties heavily into really all of the SAMP functionality, um, monitoring licenses or, you know, entitlements, uh, making sure that you aren't exceeding your license counts, uh, software reclamation and metering, you know, to monitor usage and make sure that your users that have like, say, an expensive license like a Photoshop are using it enough to justify it. Um, and then, you know, we, we do import uh, all the data into kind of the correct out-of-box CMDB and SAM tables. Um, so we, we support the SAMP tables for software installs, and we also fall back to SAMF. Um, we kind of just make sure to imp import the data, you know, wherever you would normally be looking for it from all of your other integrations. So that was really, really important. That was a piece of feedback that we had heard from the field, and other integrations weren't really, um, you know, fulfilling that at the time. So another way that we can help your ITAM program is we keep it simple. You know, our user interface, um, it features kind of a familiar modern look and feel that isn't going to be found in most integrations. I think a lot of times integrations are thought of more as, you know, just being data, hooking up a connector. So they probably, you know, I think, I think the typical, um, you know, approach is to not really give the user experience much thought, but, you know, configuration is still, you know, an important and potentially time consuming part of, you know, the user experience of using an integration. We put a lot of time into that so that our guided setup process makes the app configurable in, you know, a minute or two without professional services really being a requirement. And, you know, part of that is also that, you know, there's a lot of automation behind the scenes, you know, so that our UI can be very simple. Uh, and then the automation, you know, behind the scenes is able to really save you a lot of time and reduce the opportunity from error for errors. And you know, part of that again is that because we're we're importing in you know a very automated way and making sure to, to normalize things on the way in, um, you know, most installs are going to be able to automatically consume licenses that you have entitlements set up for. Uh, software usage is going to automatically be recorded for any software where you set up reclamation rules, and reporting is going to be available for every import. Um, and I really think that, um, you know, a big part of kind of what sets the integration apart is this, you know, user interface. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of pause the PowerPoint uh, mode here. So when it loads up, you know, you see some kind of like nice animations and things. Um, it's going to try to automatically detect if you're, if you have permissions granted on the SAMP tables to delete. So if you have other, you know, SAMP integrations, there's a good chance that you don't actually need to configure this step. If you do, we make an update set available here, and you can just apply it right in the same screen. We try wherever possible to put everything you need in one screen. Um, then coming down here, we're going to set up uh, our connection to Jamf. We're going to configure an integration user password, and then the application is going to create that integration user behind the scenes. Um, then we're going to put in our connection info and click connect. And we get immediate feedback, you know, that the connection was successful, that the software inventory scripts were deployed, and the policy was deployed. And then we also give, you know, a little sample uh, payload of, you know, what a computer looks like coming back from the data, just so you can kind of verify that, yep, this is connected, this is like a computer in my environment. And then uh, we move on to the next step of mapping users. So you've got users in Jamf and then users also in um, ServiceNow. And we've got to pick a field on those that's going to be similar between them, or it's going to be the same, right? It's got to, got to match. So um, typically, that's going to be the username, which is what we default it to. Um, it also could, in a lot of organizations, be something like email. Um, so we make you know both of these, uh, all, the, all the columns on both um, systems of record available here. And then we just have to click map users, and then that step is done. And so basically, this is just making sure that um, you know, we know how to assign the hardware coming in from Jamf uh, to the users and, you know, in your CMDB. So uh, once we've done that, 
we can move on to scheduling. Uh, we just default it to Monday through Friday at 2 a.m. You really easily, you know, toggle these on and are off and go, you know, seven days a week. And maybe you have another integration running at 2 a.m. So let's run it at four. Um, and then we can complete our setup. And that's it. The integration is configured. So even, you know, with me kind of like talking through it, you know, that's obviously a pretty quick process. You know, it spits out like when it's going to run. And then it also gives you this link to the integration dashboard. You know, wherever possible, we really try to kind of contextualize the data that's being brought in by the integration and, you know, put it all in one place, you know, so you can see, okay, we've got you know, these eight computers that have been inventoried by the integration and two iOS and tvOS devices. We've got some little actionable items and all of these are going to, you know, link out to the list views in the system. And then also, um, you know, last import summary with kind of some similar functionality. If any new computers show up, if any errors occur, um, any reclamation candidates being generated. And then if anything is not reporting software, or, you know, if there are any other errors, like no users assigned, you know, we also try to draw attention to those things so that you can hopefully remedy them instead of just kind of happily assuming, you know, that everything is working correctly and uh, finding out, you know, further down the road that there are problems. And then you also have like a big fat import button here that's tied to the, uh, it's hooked up with record watchers so that it's watching the integration progress and giving you updates as it goes along. Um, so that's, you know, pretty much the integration uh, functionality in a nutshell. Um, and so, yeah, that, you know, wraps up kind of our second item here of, of, of really trying to make it simple on the user. Um, the next, you know, uh, item on our list here is that you can you know, save your organization money and get software licenses to the users that need them. Our normalization, as I mentioned, makes the SAM functionality uh, like software reclamation, software metering, and entitlements work without a bunch of extra headaches. Um, you know, without without that um, that software inventory policy filling in the blanks of the publisher, you would have to do a lot of like manual intervention probably to make sure that um, your software installs were coming through and matching up to the the proper software model so that everything works. And then you know the other thing is that we are able to do everything with this integration without requiring uh, discovery or orchestration subscriptions. Um, and then a bonus here is that um, you're going to be able to get the CMDB discovery, which is everything that we've kind of talked about so far, and then also software uh, delivery. Uh, that's a typo. It should be saying software delivery in a single app. So in version 1.2.0, uh, we're going to be rolling out software delivery without any um, any increase to the integration price. So that's you know that's kind of a huge thing. Normally that would be um, two integrations. You know, so you're talking now that the the store minimum is uh, I think it's like 10, 10 grand a year for an a paid integration. You know, so if you have to use two pieces of software to do, you know, the inventorying and the del software delivery separately, um, you know, then you're talking about, you know, minimum 20000 a year in licensing uh, just for your integration um, on top of, you know, your Jamf Pro and ServiceNow, et cetera, licensing. So, um, so yeah, it's just kind of like another way that, you know, this integration can hopefully you know, improve your program and, and ideally save you money. Um, and so, I mean, that's kind of like, you know, a quick breeze through some of the, the functionality and some of the ways that you can improve your, um, your program. Um, definitely, you can go into the store and request a trial and check it out on one of your subprod instances. And we're offering a 10% discount to everybody that attended the webinar today. So the way that that would have to work, though, is that you would have to contact us and, you know, we will generate the quote because uh, if you go through the store, you're going to have to pay retail. They don't really have, I don't think, coupon functionality uh, yet. So we have to do that a little bit more manual, but, um, you know, start the, start the trial and mention that, you know, you are starting the trial based on the webinar and, you know, we'll make, make the discount happen for you. Um, so... I'll definitely, you know, if there are any 
questions here. Um, we can take some of those. Otherwise, you know, reach out to Taylor Seibel, who is our sales manager for our apps here. And you know, you can check out um, itsjamf.com. That's our integration website for some more details. And oh, on-prem and cloud jamf. That's a good question. Uh, we we do support both of them. We support the on-prem and cloud Jamf Pro instances. Um, you can easily, we also support multiple instances and um, you can easily do that. If you are just using the cloud, then you don't need to set up a mid-server, which makes it extra simple. Um, if you are using you know, an on-premise uh, hosted solution, then you would just need to install a mid-server, and then in that step two where you configure the connection, you just need to select that mid-server from the list, and then everything should be pretty much good to go. Um, seeing another, uh, another question here. Uh, we've been looking for a Jamf integration that delivers software usage data from Jamf to be used in recl reclamation rules. Does this integration offer that? It does. If you have reclamation rules set up, uh, the integration will pull from the computer application software usage endpoint, and it will um, it will record that software metering for you. And then, you know, at the end of I think it's every 30, 30 days, or I think it's every at the end of every month, the SAM product has a scheduled job that runs, and it will um, check the software metering, the software usage against the reclamation rules and then any any um, usages that don't meet the criteria set up in that reclamation rule will then generate a reclamation candidate um, and that should happen on an automatic basis as long as the software model is correctly linked um, and then another question uh, the 10 percent discount that was mentioned is that a one-time discount or is it ongoing through the life of the subscription um, that's a good question, and I think um, for now that's going to be just like a year one thing. So I'm sure that we'll run some promotions going forward where that that'll be available again. But I, I think at this time we're just going to do that for year one. Um, thanks so much for your time, um, and hopefully, hopefully we'll hear from you soon and see some some trials start rolling in from this, and you know maybe we'll see you at knowledge. So thanks so much.